In this video, we're going to talk about stacking, filling, and dodging, which are other ways that we can use the position argument when we're constructing a plot using ggplot2. I was actually tempted to title this section something like plots that make me emotional or plots that make me cry, because several of the graphics below make me really sad when I see them. I'll explain that to you in a bit, and hopefully I can show you a better way of constructing the plots. When creating a bar chart, a factor variable is mapped to the X aesthetic, usually. If a different factor variable is mapped to the fill aesthetic, then ggplot2 is going to stack the bars for the fill variable inside the bars for the x variable. So consider the plot below, where we have species mapped to the x aesthetic and sex mapped to the fill aesthetic. So we can see bars representing the number of observations for each species. And if you compare the heights of these bars to the heights of the previous graphic, we'll see that they match perfectly. Because we've mapped the sex variable to the fill aesthetic, within each one of those species, we've created bars that represent the number of male, female, and NA sex values within the individual species. This might seem like a really cool thing to you. There's a lot of information here presented in a very compact way, but I personally do not like this graphic very much at all. It takes a lot of mental energy to look within each one of the species and figure out how many males there are, how many females there are, how many NA values there are, there are, and then try to compare them across the different species. So I don't like this at all. If you want to compare the number of male, female, and sex values within each one of the penguin species, it would be better to specify position equals fill. So previously the default was position equals stack which meant we stacked the count for each number of sex within the different penguin species. If we specify position equals fill, the graphic looks fairly similar to before, but now the y-axis has been rescaled to be between zero and one. So instead of having an absolute count of each of the number of male, female, and NA values within each species, instead, this graphic shows the proportion of values within the different species. And when we look at this, we can see that the proportion of male values and female values is fairly constant across the three different penguin species. I still consider this a fairly poor display of the data, but this is probably a better graphic than before, at least if you want to compare these sex values across the three different species. As you analyze the previous two graphs, you may have said to yourself, if only we put the bars next to each other, we wouldn't have the interpretability problem that we were having in the previous plots. If you don't want the bars to overlap each other, you can specify position equals dodge, which means that the bars for the fill variable are going to dodge each other and get stacked next to each other. We can now clearly see the number of male, female, and NA values within each sex across the three different species. So if we want to compare the number of penguins with each sex within each species, this graphic isn't too bad. However, it's very difficult to see exactly how many observations are within each one of the species. If we wanted to compare the number of female penguins across species or the number of male penguins across species, this is going to be a little bit more difficult with this graphic because the bars are so far from one another. So once again, I'll emphasize that while the above charts provide a fair amount of information in a very compact way, we really want to focus on facilitating ease of interpretation. And so we should construct our graphics to highlight the characteristic of importance not simply to display as much information as possible. So let's say we want to compare the count of each penguin species within each sex. In that case, I would say it's better to facet the data by sex and construct bar charts of species within each one of the sexes. To create the plot below, I'm going to use facet underscore wrap to facet by the sex variable and the geom bar function to create a bar chart of species within each one of those sexes. Note that I not only create the bar chart of species within each sex, but I also use fill equals species, so I have the same color used across the different sexes. Alternatively, let's say we want to highlight the composition of the sex variable within each of the different species. In that case, I recommend creating a bar chart of the sex variable while faceting by species, which is what I've done below. You can see I've used facet underscore wrap to facet by species, but then I've created bar charts of sex where I use different colors to indicate each sex in the bar charts. In this graphic, it's very easy to see that the number of male and female Adelie penguins is identical, the number of male and female chinstrap penguins is identical, and the number of male and female of the Gentoo species are also fairly similar. 
Note that this plot is actually very similar to the dodge plot that we created above, though fasting by species does create a further distinction not present in the previous dodge plot. So after the previous discussion of stacking and filling and dodging, you might think I'm overreacting, and perhaps I am, about my dislike for the graphics that were constructed. However, the plots that were shown were shown for factor variables with only three levels of each factor. The issues that concern me are magnified greatly when our factor variables have many levels. To illustrate this point, I'm going to present stack and dodge bar charts of the diamonds data in the ggplot2 package in which we compare the cut and clarity of the different diamonds. Each of the variables has at least five levels. And as you can see, the large number of levels for the cut and clarity variables are going to make it very difficult to quickly interpret the relationship between the two variables. Similar to some of the previous videos, I'm going to use the patchwork package to combine the two charts into a single graphic. And I also rotate the x-axis labels 90 degrees so they don't overlap each other. I don't want to talk about the code here and how I use it to construct the different graphics. I mostly just want you to focus on the graphics themselves. So you can see on the left here that I've stacked bars related to clarity within the individual bars associated with the cut variable. And on the right, instead of stacking the bars of clarity, I've dodged them and put them side by side. And the question I'll ask you is, can you quickly and easily interpret the relationship between clarity and cut from these graphics? I think the answer has to be no, which is why I think instead of stacking and dodging multiple factor variables in a bar chart, you should instead facet by the different variables to make the relationships easier to understand.